So 131's out, Firefox 131, but I'm not even on it yet. So I feel like talking about it would be weird. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm on it. I don't know. What's exciting? Looks the same. Well, it all, it's okay. It's looked the same for the past 30 versions. Oh, yeah. Good point. <laughs> well, no, 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 I take that back. The little file. They changed the icons and they changed the padding yeah. on, the, on the bar and they've changed yeah. some things visually. Yeah. Not recently, though. Yeah. Small set of improvements. Like, there's mm-hmm. nothing. Oh, Linux got the file, the hover preview. That had been in Windows and Mac since 130, but in 131, Linux gets the, when you're not selected on the tab mm. and you hover over those tabs to highlight I s- them. I see that now. Yeah, the preview's there. That's kind of cool. That is better. Okay, so vertical tabs is still upcoming, but not here yet. I think that's probably the next time we do a, at least a fire watch. Oh, I like that. Fire watch. Coming up in this episode, the archive gets downed. Thunderbird goes mobile, and the Oriole takes flight. Hello, and welcome to Linux User Space. I'm Dan. And I'm Leo. And the Internet Archive is down. Down, down, down. Oh, man. So, a quick a- a thing here. Mm-hmm. Did you know that the Internet Archive is a massively huge part of how we put together <laughs> these history shows? No, dear listener, I am not just reading off of the Wikipedia page. That writing is original. And... yeah. Pretty much all of it is coming from pages that can only be accessed anymore on the Internet Archive. Like, yeah. I have, uh, like, the first half of the scrolly pages that you see on the Linux Mint video are straight from Internet Archive because they do not exist anymore. Linux Mint doesn't link to them. Well, actually, some of those pages are linked to but there was this cool WordPress update that Linux Mint did a while back. I don't even know if it's WordPress, whatever they use, but it looks like WordPress. Yeah, probably was. That, like, half the links just don't go... Mm, to the right places? Yeah, but if you find other links to them, you can find and backtrack your way and find the... like. It, it was the what's new thing. Uh, cause I, so, anyway. Oh, yeah. But there's stuff that is just down now. Like, it just doesn't exist anymore. And that all yeah. comes from... The Internet Archive, and oh boy, I I, I agree with you. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) I mean, you you could scrub the show notes and probably, you know, get the feel of how many Internet Archive links we have going on there that we've used in the show, and it's a lot because, like you said, that's the only way to find the stuff. The only exception to this rule, and I I think it's not even a full exception. uh, It was Slackware. And that's mm. because, uh, and it wasn't just Slackware. It was it was people that were working with yeah. Slackware mm-hmm. that had archived a bunch of stuff. And so, like, all of the writings, the ramblings, and the pasture and all that stuff was, like, actually in a zip file somewhere that I could download that wasn't off of Internet Archive, right? Yeah, that and, like, the release notes are just a big, long, just one big, long document. And so they're all in yeah. one thing. So it just continues on in perpetuity. Yep. yep. So that that that's another thing that that worked out good for us too yeah yeah so if you didn't know and it's been a few days this happened on the 9th uh of october Mm. so if you didn't know you are definitely living under a rock by the time you hear this yeah internet archive has been breached so brewster and i'm so sorry uh kale let's say said on october 9th what we know DDoS attack fended off for now. Defacement of our website via JavaScript library, breach of usernames, email, salted, encrypted passwords. What we've done. 
disable the JavaScript library, scrubbing our systems, upgrading security. Uh, we'll share more as we know it. So when you go to um, bleeping computers write up of this thing, they've got some cool screenshots of what's actually going on, right? And so while this was happening, if you went to archive.org, a little JavaScript pop-up came up and it said, have you ever felt like the Internet Archive runs on sticks and is constantly on the verge of suffering a catastrophic security breach? It just happened. Yeah, sorry, folks. Yep. <laughs> See 31 million of you on Have I Been Pwned? And mm. sure enough, Have I Been Pwned uh, posted a little later than that saying, yep, there they are. It happened. <laughs> yeah, it happened. Yeah, and so there have been a few folks that um, that grabbed their bcrypt hashed password, right? So not your password, your password it, hash. It, yep. To verify that it was the same thing that they had in like one password or Bitwarden or whatever, and that yep, it's real. It's real. Scott Helm, I believe, who is actually the Scott the 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 researcher that actually dug into this and figured it out. Um, September twenty eighth seems to be when. The database was taken. Yep. Uh, but yeah, sure enough, man, all that stuff is out there. So you, person that has a login to Internet Archive, uh, yeah, all that stuff uh, has been exposed. So go, uh, well, I guess you can't change it on Internet Archive yet because if you go to Internet it Archive. it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. If you go there right now, it's like, sorry, temporary unavailable. We're, you know, not alive mm -hmm. right now. So when they do come up, be a good idea to go ahead and go change that password. Um, don't don't get rid of it yet in your password manager because you'll need to change it unless uh, you can do the email swap a diddly thing. Yeah, um, which is I mean that'll that'll work too. And and I seriously hope you have not reused your password somewhere else because I yeah. think we've warned about that. Don't do that. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean use your password manager to help generate a new password. And don't reuse it elsewhere. And if you did reuse it elsewhere, go change those right now. Right. That's what you can do, right? You can't go change yep. it on the Internet Archive right now. But you can if you were one of the unlucky few that do reuse your password elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Yeah, don't uh, do that. You need to go change them at those places. Because people that, uh, and, and I say people that, but like lots of people that do the password reuse thing, also do the email reuse thing, which means oh, yeah. that if the email that you use on Internet Archive is the same email address that you use for your email login or the password that you use on your email login, if that's the same password, oh, no. Yeah, that's not good. Oh, no. Because uh, I've said it before. If, if they can get into your email, they can get into just about any account mm. ever, right? Like, passwords are actually Most of the time, not... Yeah. Yeah, passwords are actually not that important because there's that forgot your password button on every single website in all of existence, right? And when you click it, it just sends you that email that says, oh, yeah, sure, come on in, change password, whatever. So if someone gets access to your email, then they are just you at that yeah. point. Here's where I'd say having an alternate email you know, cross those, cross the streams here. This is a good idea. Having an alternate email that like kind of monitors some of those security things. So like, yeah, it can tell you if someone logged into your account in the other email account mm -hmm. so that you can say, Oh, I did not do that. And so then you can help mitigate that maybe a little quicker. Yeah. Um, that that's kind of a security feature that some email things do. Google is one of them. Okay. Just love them or hate them. <laughs> Uh, but the, like it, it, it is a thing that it will tell you, um, and it'll it'll mail out all your alternative email uh, accounts saying someone just logged into your account from right. this address or whatever, and and uh, you know if it was you, the, no problem. But if it wasn't you, you might want to look into that. Not to try and hawk a bunch of Apple stuff here, but yeah. again, just. I use all of it, everything, except Android, which I need to get some Android stuff because we're okay. about to talk about something yes, that I I got left out of because I can't have it on yeah. iOS yet, and I'm very sad about that. But one of the things that have being in the Apple ecosystem allows you to do is create a 
fake email, not fake, right? It's a forwarding email address oh, yeah. that is just yeah, yeah, gibberish. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, Mozilla does that too for you, right? Exactly. And I'm getting to that, right? So you, you have the, the fake email thing, and then you can also generate a password, and then you can store that in yeah. your Apple device, right? And it, yep. and it syncs and all that fun stuff, right? Having that different email is actually a fantastic security measure yep. because once you see one of these things, right, like you you know that this email has been part of a breach, you just disable the whole email. Yeah, start over. Well, after you reset your password, right? But then well, you can course, just throw yeah. the whole everything away and everything is even in a in a in a much better place than just changing your password. Yeah, that's right. a good point. Yep, that's a good idea. This is something that Mozilla had worked on a while ago. Mm -hmm. um, they used MozMail addresses, right. which for really some websites that are very finicky about the types of email addresses that you use, uh, they don't allow these throwaway type email addresses. Some some don't. Well, the other thing you could do, ev even um, on some of your mainstream email things, you can use plus you know emails. So like you, you, it's your username. Plus the the service, if you will. Right. And and so it like sorta of, it's not like your actual I mean, some human might be able to parse all that out. Right. But probably some bot thing is not gonna do it. So I mean that's an option too. Exactly. If your script is smart enough, you can it pick these little plusy would, things yeah, out. It might not though, right? Yeah, but I love it when it's when it's like uh, Raptor Orange Door Hinge, you know, like as my yeah, really at, at iCloud yeah. .com, and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, man, Sonic Drive In will never know who I am. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Something really unique. Yeah. So yeah, so when Sonic gets knocked over, like there'll there'll be no there'll be uh, the reason that Sonic is on the brain is because I just saw this thing. Uh, Sonic is in the is in the top ten worst fast food joints out there and there, there's no that. love yep. there's no love for sonic over here but sometimes you know getting a really cheap soda is on the list of things i want to do today yes they, they got some unique things that you know are enticing yeah don't fall for it folks uh, yeah <laughs> i mean you know grain of salt they're, they're not the best but you know really cheap sodas between two and four it's great but anyway mm -hmm. uh this this episode not brought to you by sonic at all definitely not now <laughs> <laughs> you're right yeah we're gonna get a letter but um but yeah, so like just having that ability to just do that stuff. And Bitwarden doesn't have that innately. They have, okay. So mm -hmm. what Bitwarden has is a is a random username creator. But right. if your username is your email address, that doesn't work. Doesn't help you. Nope. Right. So Bitwarden can do most of what I want. But to get the whole thing in a I don't want to use icky Google or icky Apple kind of way, you would also have to take uh, duck.com, right? DuckDuckGo mm -hmm. does yep, this. That's, yep, that's a good one. Or Mozilla or one of the other gajillion other services yep. that do this. But I like both of those things. I like DuckDuckGo and I mm -hmm. like Mozilla a lot. So, you know, use one of them, right? And if you like the Mozilla thing, which, you know, wink, wink, also not supported by Mozilla, which is a shame. Mozilla hit me up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, but yeah, use use the Mosmail thing and pay them. It's like a dollar a month or something. It's it's incredibly cheap, and you get as many of those email addresses as you want without without paying for it. You get it. You get like ten or something. You have ten, ten for free. Yes. Yeah. We actually talked about this in an episode. I'll have to find that and link it. We totally did. Ten active, so you can delete them and re remake them, right? But yeah, ten ten total active at uh, at any given time. But spend the one dollar. And get unlimited and mm -hmm. just use that as your forwarding address so that you can have these accounts and you can manage all that stuff. And then you can uh, be able to throw away your email address when you're in one of these breaches as yeah. well. And you'll think us later. Yeah, yeah exactly. The, the extra peace of mind that you get when you're able to get, get, get rid of that password because that's disposable. But also get rid of the email address because that's disposable too yes. is nice it's kind of nice after the breach seemed to be about 22 hours ish right don't quote me on that the group started a group started taking credit for both the attack itself and the ddos that seemed to happen approximately 22 hours after the original attack s in black meta said 
that they were responsible for both the attack and the DDoS. So mm, not great. Not it's not great. Great. So all that to say, if you're expecting uh the snap history episode uh next time this may or may not have an impact on it, that it might yeah uh because there are some things with click apps that is just not on the internet anymore so if i need to dig in the archive to get that stuff and the archive is still in its state in a tizzy then uh yeah we there might be something we might have to do something about we could that. have to pivot potentially but we're gonna try yeah i apologize wink wink if you get if we just get another topic episode or something <laughs> well i mean that wouldn't be the end of the world right it would not uh honestly i would kind of enjoy that so Anyway, if you're on the Internet Archive, be ready. You might need to change password soon. And if you're using cool disposable email addresses, change that too. Um, but yeah. Huh. Huh. Yeah. One of, the, one of those things. Hang in there and stay tuned. And while you're staying tuned, go ahead, hit the subscribe on the YouTube thing. If you're not listening to, well, okay, maybe you're not listening to them all. But if you're not getting the RSS feed straight to your face, stick us in a podcast app. I know you have one on your phone. Don't don't lie to me. And just add the URL. Uh linuxuspace.show. Click on the click on the link. It'll just pop open in your podcast app immediately because that's just how apps work. And subscribe to that thing. And if you want just the history stuff, that's where Tilvits comes in. I try to be mm. respectful. Yeah. I try not to use up all the data that they freely give us for free for free 99. So the history stuff goes over there. That is set for a weekend thing so that I can uh, plenty of time, right? So anyway. Yeah, good, good ed edutainment over there. That's it. That's it. So once you, once you uh, are done with all of our history, you can kind of meander off and go check out some of that other edutainment stuff that's going on over on Tilvid. So fantastic resource for all of that. And if you enjoy it, if you like the history stuff, if you like the videos, if you like the shorts, if you like the this and the that and the, oh, shorts are three minutes now. So shorts are less short now, right? Yeah. I keep forgetting that we do that sometimes. I so guess they like aren't months. vines anymore. So no, no, not at all. Not seven seconds. If you like all of that stuff, if you like the stuff that we do, if you like our banter, if you like our faces, if you like all that, whatever, and if you like any bit of it, go check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash Linux user space. And a uh, buck or two, one dollar, get you a, a Lemmy username yeah, handle get with you in the Linux. There, yeah. yeah, it says at, at lemmy.linuxuserspace.show. I mean, so you can wear the badge. Um, the three dollar thing gets you early access to the shows, yep. get you a high quality version of the show on yeah. show release day. Uh, Five dollars uh, will get you the whole thing. Turns out, there was like 45 minutes of junk that just won't make the show, right? And then... Junk? Yeah. Come on. Some of those are the best parts. Oh, yeah. You're kind of right. So some of those actually do make it to the front and the end or whatever. But That's yeah, there's, there's 45 minutes of just me and Dan being me and Dan. Sometimes uh, it's Coming more. up to the show, hair on fire, <laughs> figuring out what we're going to talk about. Um, yeah, that stuff doesn't make the show. So you get access to that for the $5 tier audio version. Um, and then for, uh, for the $10, you get the video version of all of that. Right to your face. Yeah. Raw, raw out of the camera, right to your face. Yeah. I was smiling at the camera. Uh, you can see it in YouTube, but you can see it early and you can see it awesome through Patreon. Yeah. At the $10 tier. It, it, listen, it, it, I want to just jump in here real quick. We were talking about Internet Archive. And, um, you know, maybe once they get back on their feet, um, if, if you don't, I mean, if you don't want to donate to us, I mean, consider donating to them, you know, directly because they really do make the shows happen. Yeah, seriously. Those history episodes do not exist without archive.org. Uh, so, yeah, when they come back up, after everything is safe and secure and they give you the all go ahead or whatever, uh, you maybe don't use the actual form there on archive.org. Maybe yeah, use maybe not. PayPal link or something. <laughs> That's fine. And at least then you can, you know, control it a little bit, maybe potentially. Yeah, so. right, but consider right. consider it, right? It really does matter. 
Right. So if if Patreon gives you the ick or something like that, go throw Internet Archive some money because yeah, yeah, like Dan said, they they really make these shows happen. So um so yeah, support them. Supporting them supports us. So go do that. All right, Leo. This is something that you've been excluded from. <sighs> and How dare so, you? Um, I'm just gonna, you know, make you drool over there and and wave it in your face. Yeah, I use Thunderbird on the desktop. So do I, and I love it because it works on everything. It works on the Windows. It works on the Mac, and of course, it works on the. And it's like pre-installed on lots of Linux yes, it is. too. Yep, which yep. is my favorite thing. It's nice. It's, it has a lot of features, especially on the desktop, that are fantastic. Uh, the, the the revamp that they did a few versions ago mm -hmm. was amazing. That's nice. I it love really that. Came out good. But yeah, the version that I can't play with right now is on Android. Android. It is. It's on the Android. It, it's it's currently in beta right now. So they had one release already, and they've moved on to beta two, which is where we're at right now as we record. Mm -hmm. And then later this month in October, they will be releasing it out of beta. It'll be regular release at that point. So that's really quick. And uh, it's, 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 yeah. When's the full release happening? By the end of the month. This month? October. Wow. Yeah, we're Man. in it. Yeah, yeah, Man. right. I uh, thought beta so would last a little longer so I so I could like uh, find an Android device to get this on. <laughs> well, you still can. There's still I've got time. time. You got a little bit of time. And so I'll link that's all documented in in the blog post that they have and that uh, you know, friend of the show Monica Ains Madden posted. Mm -hmm. So I hmm. I will link to that in the show notes here so you'll be able to find that. Um it's I've been using it since uh, early days, maybe even the first few days, uh, because I saw a post on on Mastodon that was linked to the to the blog post, and lucky I jumped all over it because I absolutely do love Thunderbird on the desktop, and I use mm -hmm. that all the time. And you know, I do have a lot of email accounts, and so one of the things that I grown to like here in the in the few days that I've been using it, is it allows you to add multiple accounts. Now, other email clients can kind of do that too, but as you've known from using the desktop, I think Thunderbird is probably one of the best to be able to to do that with multiple accounts, right? Yeah, yeah. I've got my I've got a couple of Gmail accounts on there. I've got uh, the Linux user space account on there. I've got my personal mm -hmm. hosted yep. email account on there. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, it just it, and it makes it. It may, if you just like the fire hose of mail to the face, you can totally do that. I mean, you, you get into but, the each individual. Th anyway, so that but that's about the desktop. So yeah, and so like everybody says, you know, just go use the native client or whatever. Go use the web app. I mean, it, I'm on my phone though. I mean, I, I just I just want it to be simple. That's simple. three different places that's what I want. for me. Yeah, I can't just exactly. go use the web app because there's three different web apps for that's, all of that. That's so exactly. So I, I really love that and I've been appreciating that since I've been been using it. Yeah. And one of the things is it has an automatic account addition thing. And so like that works pretty great. I know they've they've got that going on in the desktop client too. And so um this is the same. So you, you just put in the email address that you want to add and it goes and checks and see to see if there's a configuration that it can apply. So you don't have to worry about all the IMAP settings or whatever, you know, stuff is happening in the background. Mm -hmm. And like for Gmail, it's doing the OAuth, uh, you know, authentication so that it's it's one of those uh, clients that's basically accepted, if you will, um, because that's another thing. You don't have to go set up an app password for that and do all the special stuff it just it'll it'll do gmail just fine mm -hmm. and so i i do i have a couple in here i actually you know for testing i did throw my gmail in there and i've also got uh my yahoo which is kind of my spam throw yahoo thing. but, I, but I, you know i wanted to i wanted to test it so there it is right so okay. um well if there's anybody that's been breached like the internet archive it's yahoo well, yeah it probably <laughs> is <laughs> um, and that's why I toss all the spam stuff at it. 
Right, <laughs> exactly <don't>... <laughs> right. That's that's the one I don't care about this service email. This is the one you get. You get Yahoo. Yep. So, uh, but the automatic uh, integration there worked perfectly and flawlessly. It added both of those. Took me to the page to be able to log in, uh, you know, using my password and stuff. And then it, it, you have an accept button, basically, that says, do you want Thunderbird to, you know, have access to your email? Right. Yes. Job done. There it is. I'm in my inbox. So for the email addresses that the vast, vast majority yeah, uh, all the big people ones. have, it's pretty much just a log in to Google through Thunderbird and it just works. Job done. Yep. Nice. That's really And so cool. like it lets you send mail, it lets you delete mail, it lets you do all the things that you're doing either on the web app or the native Android app for Gmail. It lets you do all that stuff. It's kind of great. That is really cool. So, all right. So imagine if you will, you're opening up the, the Google application, right? The mm-hmm. Gmail application. Yep. What is, what's the difference? Like, so it does you're have gonna, a little bit of a By the way, you're going to have to send me screenshots so I can put this stuff up on the screen because I don't have an Android device to be able to do that. Yeah, no, All I right. will. I'm just going to send you emails and then... <laughs> yeah, then and, there'll just be a whole string of them or something. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll do a folder or something that oh, is from, from Leo or something. Okay, and then um, put that next to your credit card information and then we'll just, we'll just yeah. go through. We'll just go through and we'll check them out. We'll see what's going on. That sounds good. Take screenshots. No. <laughs> It looks kind of similar at first, but like it, it, it's much faster. So one of the things I love about Thunderbird, and and they do this on the desktop too, is by default they don't enable all of the picture stuff to 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 like populate, you know, automatically. Mm-hmm. You have to click the button that says download images or you know or enable inline images and all yes, that stuff. That so was what I was going to ask you. It, it's just the bail to your face and you know you don't get all the the stuff the cruft unless you want to and so then you hit the button and obviously it it loads up but because it isn't loading all those images in the background automatically it loads so much faster it's yeah. amazing yeah and, okay you know, so this is my favorite feature about thunderbird on the desktop so i'm so mm-hmm. glad that i mean that thunderbird on mobile is going to be behaving the same exact way yeah. right because i imagine People that are using Linux tend to also, not everybody, tend to also at least be in the privacy adjacent sphere. Yeah. And yeah. man, that's that that's my absolute favorite thing because people are worried about tracking pixels and they're worried about images and preloading yeah, this and that. And right. Um, and that's one of the things that Thunderbird will actually prevent uh anybody from doing is tracking you, right? But- because you don't download the image by default. You can turn that on if you want to, right? It can be you that can. way, but, you can. but by you can. default. You go into the settings and turn it on. Yeah, but it's not by right. default. Right. And then, um, yeah, so I absolutely love that particular feature. That is my mm-hmm. favorite feature of all it's email clients. And you can't get that by going to the web app. That's one of my, that's, that's my yeah. worst, the, I hate that the most. Oh, about well, all the web stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. You click on the thing, it immediately downloads the images or whatever. And, you know, mm-hmm. some of them aren't, but most of them are tracking you around the web. Yeah, and, probably. Man. So this is this is my killer feature for yeah. why you want an email client on your phone that is not the built-in email client. This is yeah. it. Yeah, it's, oh. it's a good one. But because, you know, you can imagine, I mean, devices vary in, you know, ability you know, the amount of resources that are available to to render all of that stuff. So if you have it disabled, it's it's going to be a ton faster. It just yeah. it is. And so that's that's and a save super you nice on thing. the battery life. Yeah, no, so it's not killing your battery either, yeah, because it's not rendering pictures and all of that stuff, right? Yeah. And so I, I really like it from that standpoint. Um it is it is a very basic thing. It just does email, but that's kind of a feature in itself too. Like you don't have the calendaring things or you don't have any of the, there's no chats. So there's not, none of that, right? It just does email and yeah. it does it really well. So do you remember back in the day, Dan, when an mm. app used to do one thing? And it did it well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of the Unix philosophy when you think about it, right? That's right. That's um, right. So I'm not opposed to that. I think that's pretty great that it, it does those things and it does them well. Um, so, but because it's basic, it doesn't have a lot of, you know, whiz bang, 
you know, theming or any of that stuff. You basically got, you know, your light and your dark or it follows your system theme. Yeah. Which is either light or dark, probably. So <laughs> first of all, Thunderbird, iOS win. Yeah, that would be nice. They don't I don't even know if that's on a radar. Really don't. Because but there's a reason for it. Hear me out on that, right? So this has evolved from K9 email that, right. that used to be the thing. And so then, you know, Mozilla took that over and they've they've been working for a while now to convert K9 into Thunderbird. Mm -hmm. And um a lot of that is the look of it and the branding and whatnot. So now that they've gotten there, it really does work good. And then they inter integrated all of the account thing so to be able to easily add account stuff. That, that works right. pretty great too. So from that standpoint, I really love it. I've been enjoying it and I plan to continue. Honestly, I it's, it's something that I'm, I'm going to hang on to. Yeah. I mean, I fell in love with the desktop one. There's no doubt that I would fall in love with a, with a mobile version of it. And mm -hmm. I mean, this is me coming from, this is why I don't mind it just being a mail app because mm -hmm. I'm coming from, if I, if Thunderbird ever came to iOS, uh, I would definitely be signing up for it. But uh, I'm coming from the app on my phone called Mail. Yeah. <laughs> and it just does mail. Mail. Yeah. So, right. I mean, yes, there's calendar integration and all that kind of stuff going on in the background. Right. But, but the fact that remains all I care about in the mail app is mail. Mail. Yeah. So all I would care about in a Thunderbird mail app is also mail. But mm -hmm. I wouldn't put it past them to eventually turn it into like an RSS feed and all kinds of other stuff, too, because yeah. that's what the desktop app has. Like, it does. I would. I would. I honestly wouldn't really be mad if they were like, "Hey, guess what? You can turn on an optional IRC module." Yeah, or Matrix even, or something, right? Because that's the thing now too. Yeah, like honestly, uh, if it gave me access to IRC channels, uh, I would just, I would, I would just. Kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that'd work on mobile, but really well, it probably wouldn't work really well. You kind of need to be connected all the time, right? Exactly, and that would just that would likely kill your battery. So you know, yeah, don't, people don't. get annoyed when you leave and join. You oh, know, right. IRC yeah, all the exactly. time, right? Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. you set my mode, sir? Get out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that being said, uh, probably calendar would be the most useful thing if they were going to add anything. Yes, I think. Yeah, some kind of calendar integration would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Would they use their own calendar backend, or would you just know. integrate it into the Google Calendar backend or some other? That's a good question. I, I know the one that's uh, in the desktop app isn't too bad. I don't mind it. That works pretty good. Yeah, I don't For the, I don't use for the that. little bit that I use it. Does that sync? Can you sync that? Is there a Thunderbird sync? It will It will connect to things, yes. So like WebDAV is one of the things. So Okay, so you could have a Nextcloud calendar. Yeah. And then could. use WebDAV to connect up to that calendar. And then, it, it, then you could sync to that. And mm -hmm. then it would kind of play nice and do the yeah, whole that, that thing. Yeah, that would that would be a great way to, you know, yeah, be your hub. That connection. would actually be another upgrade. Mm -hmm. That would be amazing. Yep. Okay. Regardless right. of that, right? No, so I did say like it is basic, but it will render your HTML email and it does a really good job of it, I think. I actually I think it might do better than the native Gmail app for me because I Sometimes really? when you get really large web emails, um, it'll say, you know, view client in browser or something or view email in browser because it's too big. It's too long. Really? And, and, it, and so if you do that in Thunderbird, I think it looks a ton better because I don't know, it just really changes like the size when you do that in the Gmail app. And so then you, you end up trying to you know you got to pinch and zoom down to a size that you can see yeah otherwise it's more like it's trying to load the desktop page on your mobile device it's a little janky right yeah um, Ooh. Ugh. don't yeah. don't say that in email man no yeah I, uh, yeah yeah i'm looking for words most of the time but like um i'll give you a really bad example of things that you should not ever subscribe to is the harbor freight um, you know, specials that they send you. Listen, listen, 
those coupons are gold. Shh. It, they are. It's and it's all pictures, though. It really I mean, is. I mean, look, it's here, terrible. Here's here's my philosophy in life, uh, and and it it stretches to Harbor Freight too. Mm-hmm. So when I'm looking for a tool or mm. a software or a piece of hardware mm. or something like that, right? Like I always go for the cheaper version first, mm. and if I use it enough to break it, yeah, then maybe I'll upgrade. Yeah, then that means I go get the one that's going to last me a lifetime with mm-hmm. the lifetime warranty and all of that stuff. Right. But the first step is Harbor Freight. And for those that don't know, Harbor Freight is kind of like a hardware store, uh, but they tend to be bottom of the barrel on, I mean, it actually kind of depends on what Some you're of buying. Stuff is not. Yeah. Like they do have a professional line, right. And those right. are good. Right. I don't but know. I'll go yeah, and but get, some of it is really cheesy. Right. And I'll go and get the super cheap version and I'll bring along my, they mm-hmm. keep emailing them to me, uh, my 25% off store wide coupon and use it on that thing to get it even cheaper. Like it was already yeah. worth what I was going to pay. I, and then I, I can get 25% off of it too. So I hate to confess, I'm actually an inside track member. See? See? And so he gets an extra 10% off. So. I do, and then I get free things all the time too. <laughs> exactly. Like sometimes no purchase necessary, just show up and show yeah. them. You're, you're just, and they're like, "Here you go. Here's, Here's your, your five bucket. gallon bucket." Yeah, yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what I'm what I'm getting at is that this is this is what I do, man. I'll buy the cheap one, and then when I break it, I'll get the better one. But that cheap one pretty much always comes from Harbor Freight. So yep. sorry for the sidetrack, for the segue there. Yeah, same. But, but don't but you the talk emails, about my Harbor Freight like that. <laughs> oh, but the emails, you've seen them. And yes. they, they are all pictures. And that's the only way you're going to get any information out of it is if you're looking at the yeah. pictures. And yeah. uh, in in the Gmail app on, on Android, they they write off the page. And then you, you know, you're trying to look at the, the actual desktop version of it, and it. Right. It's not good. It's not good. But on Thunderbird, it looks good. Yeah, it's that's good. right. That's right. So you better believe I'm long press saving as image uh, the coupons so that I can just be like, here you go, beep, and then yep. you know, get my get my twenty yep. percent off, whatever it so, is. Go check it out if you have an Android device. I really recommend it. Um, you can click on the blog link and it'll it'll tell you all about it. Um, I I I like it. I I'm I'm keeping it. Okay, okay, Here, here's a sort of off-topic, but not really question. I need an Android device now. Uh, mm. I, but, uh, but, but I don't want to spend keep it a... here, close to the, close to the Android type Well, he, thing. here's my thought. Here's, uh, honestly, not a hard requirement. What I want, all right, here's the deal. I don't want okay. apps like Threads and Instagram on my phone. I do not. They do not need access okay. to my, here's the thing. Instagram? Have you seen the permissions on this thing? Like, I don't have it on my phone, so I here's, have not. Here's the thing about Instagram. Uh, when I went to go install it on my uh, iOS device, I looked through the permissions, as someone with a tinfoil hat will do. And you know that it actually tracks your heart rate. I don't, I'm not surprised. Why? And uh, as meta? soon as I asked it, I was like, oh, if they know while, while you're, I mean, okay, we're getting into They know you're getting excited about terror- the right. pictures you're looking at, right? That's exactly what I was thinking. Like, mm. like they'll, they're able to. Okay, that but, algorithm. But maybe, maybe not. But honestly, when you have that data and you can just feed it you into an AI it. model, like it wouldn't, it's, it's not as far-fetched these days as it used to be to take this data and actually make useful guesses out of it. You know what I mean? Like, yep. so anyway, long story short, I don't think they need that information at all. They so I opted to not install the app. And, but I need a device that I can kind of mobile do that stuff with. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, you know, an Android device not tied to anything else would actually be a really good way to it's handle terrible. it. So mm-hmm. this is just a second reason. Thunderbird is a second another reason for me to get mm-hmm. an android device to do this stuff with so i need to know what kind of android device to get because i need to have an android device when thunderbird comes out of beta i need to have something so my requirements what did i say about harbor freight keep it cheap like cheap Pro- and then probably it- an older pixel honestly if i'm gonna pick and then um uh, because that'll allow you when you get sick of actual Android, you can install like graphene or something on it. 
Okay. So, uh, so consider that's tablets my suggestion. Too. Does oh, I didn't even really think about that, honestly. Does a can can an can the Amazon? I know, dirty word. The Fire Tablet. Uh, I uh, don't know. I have one of those. I'll check it out. Hey Alexa, can I no, install geez, Google so Play on an Amazon Kindle? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks. I pre. Thank you. <laughs> I, yeah. There's, I wonder. There, there's other app stores you can add to the Fire Tablet. Just so you know. Having done that, you can add F-Droid and stuff. Can you do the Google one, though? Uh, I don't think so. Hey, Google! I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. Stop. Cancel, Google. <laughs> now, that's a thing that has recently been in the news, and I don't think there's resolution to it yet, right? Supposedly, Google is supposed to allow its store to be installed on other devices, right? Right. Well, this is thing. a this is the EU yeah. just swinging yeah, yeah. and it, being it's like still it's still in litigation, so not resolved right. yet. But it but it'll probably happen eventually, and then I us in the so. US will will like benefit of a year Absolutely. after or two years after. Well, that's fine because, because we'll never get cool legislation like that passed. Anyway, okay. Yep. So if you have a suggestion on an Android device, uh, super cheap, doesn't have to be a phone, doesn't have to be a tablet, could be either, could be both, could be a phablet. Uh, okay. Let me know. Yeah, let no. me know what I can get my hands on. Pixel is on the radar because you can get those pretty cheap. I think nowadays. And yeah, the still... older ones. Yeah. So like, if you had a seven, probably it's still pretty yeah. functional and not terribly expensive. Yeah. So, so I, I guess I don't need long term support or anything like that. I, I won't be that you... sad if it explodes. Right. And if you don't need like a well, you say that, but those are supported for quite a while. Right. Okay. So. Anyway, throw me your suggestions if you got them, because uh, I'm I'm shopping. I'm shopping. Okay. All right. Catch these and all the other cool, great topics that unfold over on Lemmy, on our subreddit, over on the Reddits, um, or the news channel on Discord. Just gets floop, vacuumed up straight from Lemmy over on the Discord. Yes, it does. Um, and then you can link those into the main chat, and then we can talk about it and all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah, we can start a thread, and we can discuss things back and forth. That's right. So uh, if you're if you're not into the forum slash Discordy style stuff, we also got the Telegrams and the Mastodons and the Twitches and the old Twitters. Twitch for the live stream, by the way, which we did skip, but usually comes out the day after you hear one of these episodes. That is. If you're keeping up with the times and you see when they come out and watch That's them true. that day. But, um, yeah, so we got the live streams out there, too. Um, and then we've also added in, as you've heard, uh, the old threads and the Instagrams. And uh, we got a TikTok, too, that when I remember to we do, do shorts. Yeesh. We do. I know. When, we, when I remember to do the shorts. I also post them on the reels and the, the ticker talks as well. Yeah. So yeah. well, we got blue sky as well. Oh, that's right. That's actually in the corner. How do you forget the one in the, it's it's down there? Uh, it's for down those of there. you just listening, um, I promise it's down there. But for those of you watching, yeah, it's the little butterfly down at the bottom. It actually we replaced the old dead bird down there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with I mean, it's, the uh, it's, it's the OG Twitter in my estimation. Yeah, it looks like it. All right. So anyway, however you however you get a hold of us, however you watch uh, while you're not watching. Um, come say hi, come join those things and have ourselves a conversation and all that kind of good stuff. So we'll see you there. I'll, I'll, I'll see you there. So Leo, I got dressed up for this occasion. Maybe you've noticed I have my tuxedo on. It's and, so fancy. You know, with, with, with tux and stuff. So that's, that's uh, right. Um, because today is release day. It for actually Ubuntu is. and the flavors. Yeah, as we record. Yes, for, today is for the those day. keeping track, we're recording on release day, which wasn't supposed to be today. It's not supposed at all. to be. But the release day today. was, but the recording was not. We were supposed to do right. this a while ago, but it kind of worked out because I really wanted to talk about Ubuntu because it turns out we'll be talking probably if the Internet Archive is alive. Then more than likely. Talking about more Ubuntu the next time because Ubuntu is the only one using snaps out of the box on purpose, out of the box, I think, yeah. right? Anyway, yeah, so mm. we'll talk about that. But anyway, Ubuntu itself, pretty great. Um, yeah. At least today. And there's a whole bunch of flavors, too. Don't don't forget those guys. That's um, right. 
they've got some cool stuff happening as well. Okay, I was gonna enumerate all of the flavors, but uh, I didn't have the page up uh, because I was lazy. But this is a a time restricted show. Okay, here we, we go. Here's you can't choose <laughs> you you can't choose Lubuntu. Okay. Buy it. If you Oof. had to pick oh. an Ubuntu flavor to use forevermore, hmm. which one would you choose? Oh, I don't know. Kubuntu. Okay. That's a good choice. Yeah. How about I pick one that's not cute? Okay. Yeah. Make it harder. I mean, if not I got to pick cute. one. Um, don't you I'm dare go... say regular. Oh, okay. Ubuntu Classic. Budgie? You were going to go Ubuntu Classic? I knew it. I was. Okay. But, I, you know, I like, I like them all. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Well, all right. So, full disclosure. Uh, my first would have been Ubuntu Classic. My second would have been Kubuntu. So, like, it's not like... Yeah, it, no, that's that's right on track, yeah. Crazy revelation. But, so here's the deal with all of that, though, is that, like, I can't use... I can't right now use Ubuntu everywhere. I have to make mm-hmm. compromises. This is this is the explanation for why I chose... Or Kubuntu is in the mix of, of choosing. Mm, yep. KDE is the only desktop right now at all. Prove me wrong. Desktop, specifically said desktop, not window manager, that supports fractional scaling of X apps run through X Wayland and they don't look like trash. Mm, probably true. I haven't tried 2410 yet. So I might be eating my words. Okay. Yeah, that that maybe, yeah. Ubuntu has been known for taking rando patches that make things better and just adding it on top of GNOME, even mm-hmm. after GNOME said no, right? The triple buffering that's, patch is one that's of That's still a thing. And that, there was an I saw an article today about it even. <laughs> the triple buffering, really? <laughs> yep. So wow. yeah, actually I said it, 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 the article, just to segue a little bit, said that uh GNOME is just considering totally refactoring the whole patch wow th- that would leave ubuntu and i feel like there's someone else that has also adopted it um out in the cold a little bit i mean i guess that means they're not working on it anymore and they're never going to right. incorporate it as is it'll be totally refactored and something different right okay so so just for my own edification gnome like if you if you're shipping gnome just mm-hmm. gnome you you're not shipping that patch right or did no, they no. they like arch if you installed it in arch or something no yeah you're not getting that patch okay so ubuntu no. goes out of their way to take that patch that never made it yeah. to gnome proper and adds that patch yeah Okay, all right. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously, I just, you can go recompile it yourself sure. and add it in, but that's not by default, no. And what are we running? Gen 2? <laughs> Maybe we have. I don't <laughs> Honestly, know. Honestly, <laughs> you know, looking back at all the distros that we used, Gen 2 might actually be, if you don't have that patch in, uh, enabled already. You could add it, yeah. Gen 2 would probably be the easiest way to actually add that in. No, void probably wouldn't be too bad, right? Because there's a way to recompile those source things. Like there's tooling for it. Well, the so X, that, is that the XBMC X, thing? No, that's yeah, the. X, no, yeah. that that we were talking about that on the live stream. Yeah, the Xbox uh, thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, but they have X XB source thing. They have. Yes. Right. They do. They have XB, a tool. They have XBP, tools for it. XBPS. Yes. That's the one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, can go back. That to might source be not too bad. Yeah. Okay. So all right, void people. And Gen two people, you got to help us solve this. What would it would it be? E- would it really be easier in Void to incorporate a patch, or would it be easier in Gen two to incorporate a patch? Well, I don't know. Hmm. That that sounds like a head to head for another day. But that I is suppose a good... there's always the possibility some other user repository might have those things kind of built up, if you True. will, and so then you could just install the package that way and it'd be done with it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this is this is the reason why I use Ubuntu, man. Like, why I use Ubuntu derivatives is why. I use, yeah, it's easier. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Like, I'm, man, for for as much tinkering as I like to do, uh, sometimes that's when not I just one of the things. Work, probably right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just I want to click the easy button, you know. Yeah, that's click, fair. And then it just be installed. So, 
Yeah. Um, so unless Ubuntu has done some kind of crazy end run around and fixed what I think is a GTK. I issue? don't know. Yeah. Or I, I don't okay, I'm I'm just kind of making it up, but because I don't yeah. actually know what the issue is. But when when you have like you're scaling at 125 or 150 or something like that, and you have an X app, so Discord is important to us yes. and still runs through X Wayland when you're running yeah, a Wayland Electron. session. Yeah. Right. When it scales up for in anything that's not a integer scale, so 200%, 400%, right? Um, it looks blurry just because it it's mm -hmm. like a JPEG. It's like stretching a JPEG for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, Plasma has this figured out. I'd, it's pretty good there, yep. I I mean, Neil has explained it to me. Oh, it's above our heads. But yeah, right? Like Neil is a smart man and he knows so yes. much. And I one day hope to know half as much as he knows. But anyway, so he knows how it works. I do not know how it works. But they've nailed it. They have. This is this is the this is the biggest reason why I've why I've lived on Aurora for so long, which is the silver blue uh immutable but uh george yeah, castro and and, and yeah, yeah. crew have made it ubuntuized it right again still in the Ish, ubuntu orbit yeah still you're in not the, wrong right uh but it's a fedora right so anyway but i'm using aurora and i have and i need scaling on the framework and it just everything looks nice and crisp and amazing and this is why i chose kubuntu for the question I, I i think i think it would be a good choice i mean it's plasma six so i mean it makes sense right um, right. And so that's a good thing. Yeah. So that's that's and, pretty neat. And I got ahead of myself. The question was to me going to be which Ubuntu would I choose? And I can't choose Ubuntu Cinnamon because I'm a Cinnamon guy. Mm. Right. I, I it would because Linux Mint's coming out with the cool theming and stuff that yeah. Ubuntu Cinnamon will have. But also Ubuntu Cinnamon's Yaru is fantastic. It's good. It's so, good. I like it. I use it. I mentioned that. Yeah, I just wouldn't even change it. I would just use that and not change it. But yep. anyway, so since I'm a cinnamon guy, I can't choose Ubuntu cinnamon. So which one would I choose? I think Ubuntu would still be first if mm -hmm. if they get the fractional scaling blurry X Whalen thing figured out. But until that happens, Kubuntu is the only option. It, it I can I can only choose Kubuntu. Well what Whalen's a thing, right? I mean, that's not really available to many other. I mean. It's it's available. Wayland's everywhere. You have to uh, actively avoid it now. But uh, most of the other desktop environments, it's not mainstream quite yet. Yeah. Well, and, and that's scaling. coming. It's coming. Well, the, the, so it falls falls in line. I mean, they don't really have a lot of Wayland session stuff going right. on. Well, GNOME does, but I GNOME think does and and Plasma does. But that's that's where you're at. I mean, if you want yeah. good Wayland experience. Pretty much. But this is also why I use Linux Mint on the desktop, right? Like I don't mm -hmm. need Wayland there. I don't particularly care what the what, what's right. going on in the back end or whatever. So I still continue to use X for I mean, the vast majority of my non mobile experience. It's still X. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not it's not a huge deal for me. But on the laptop, Wayland is just it it's just nice. seems way better. Um, because I, yeah, you're right. It's because the desktops that use Wayland are, think about laptop usage a lot more, I think. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so yeah, it has to be, it has to be Kubuntu. It has to be Kubuntu because otherwise I just couldn't use it on a laptop. I, listen, but, I ran Kubuntu on my desktop here for quite a while. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But, but to, to cap this off, if GNOME slash Ubuntu, because again, Ubuntu could totally just do it. Uh, if they find a way to do whatever yeah. Plasma's doing to make it crispy yeah, that and bring that over, yeah. Yeah. then hands down it would be, it would be Ubuntu, fair, regular, fair, fair. regular Ubuntu. Because this is actually the same reason that I cannot use, uh, what's the non-Aurora version of Aurora? Bluefin. That's why I can't mm. use yeah, yeah, yeah. Bluefin. Because I scale at a weird integer and well, not. Well, I'd say beyond integer. that, though, like there's some quality of life things that they bring into GNOME, definitely. Right. Um, so, like. Pataxis. Well, th that's Looks now. Right. Yeah, that, that's there now. <laughs> but I yeah. mean, 
But like, no, the app indicators is a thing for me. Oh, and I yes. love that they add that in there. And for some people, it's the desktop icons and stuff, and being able to toggle those things on and off because that's yeah. not everywhere either. Like, I think they make GNOME usable. They don't add a lot, but it's just enough those quality of life things. Yeah, that I I, I can get on with that. You know. Yep. Yep. Absolutely, man. Uh, yeah. I just don't tinker with it after I've installed it and it works. The, I, yeah, again, yeah. Sometimes I just want the easy button and Ubuntu and Bluefin and anybody that takes GNOME and adds like the quality of life stuff that Dan's talking about onto it. Like it's an easy win for me on a on a machine that I don't have to scale in any way whatsoever. But yep. th- the answer to this, the actual answer to my scaling problem is not hoping and wishing and waiting for GNOME to fix it. It's for me to buy the upgraded framework display that allows me to scale at 200% without it looking all weird. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Sure, yeah. That's that's the real I thought you were going to go to XFCE or something. But, well, okay, you know that, that wouldn't. Act, you know <laughs> I was what? Joking, I was joking. <laughs> I was, fr- I was, I was looking <laughs> frantically looking for a reason, and I can't, it won't go to sleep, man. It won't go to yeah, sleep on I my T four fifty S. Like this thing is this thing is almost ten years old. It won't go to sleep out of the box. Yeah. I, just, I close it and it's like, what do you want me to do now, boss? Yeah. Sir, I want you to go to sleep. I closed you. Yeah, but that being said, <laughs> I think Zubuntu <laughs> probably has the nicest. XFCE experience yeah. out of the box. Yeah. Like, I, I, it's kind of consistent throughout all of the flavors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Just so, what is it? Is it just a, is it just an attitude that you, and I, I don't, it's not have to have, but is it like an attitude that people just tend to have when they're part of Ubuntu that it's got to look good? It's got to work well. Right. It's, it, it's, it's, it's a quality thing. Yeah, no, there's a lot of quality that goes into the testing, um, you know, the the QA stuff that goes on. Yeah. It's, I, I, you're probably, and so, yeah, everybody's like, oh, it's old. It's the, it's a version back, but that's because it's well tested, folks. It yeah. really does work. Right. But one of those things uh, that is changing now mm-hmm. is the kernel is going to yes. be tracking upstream better or something. It is going to track closer to the mainline kernel as you get closer to the release date they're still going to be tracking that uh, a much closer than they were before um so kernel freeze happened earlier in the cycle in the development cycle previously and so consequently you got locked into a a a kernel that you know was a little bit old maybe Mm -hmm. and they would apply patches and stuff but you'd still be kind of locked into that now, exactly. not so much. We're getting closer to release date before we lock in the kernel, and it just means you're you're tracking a little closer to the main line. Okay. Does that still mean though that over the over the course of an Ubuntu life, if you don't elect to go hardware enablement, you're still yeah. on that same kernel for twelve years? Yeah, I mean, I guess you could be if you were on an LTS. But here's the thing: if you do choose the hardware enablement route. Like what happens in the interim release will then happen in the LTS in the next point release. So right. in, in a way, um, that's a really good thing, too, because you're getting a, a much more updated kernel there as well. Right, right. And this is this is kind of why it doesn't work. Well, why, why it sometimes is beneficial for gamers, but also sometimes mm-hmm. does not work for gamers, right? Like so. Well, if you're not like on the bleeding, bleeding edge and you're just like right. a little bit you know, closer to that, like the point releases will help you a ton. Yeah. This is why I enjoy AMD hardware on the Linux side, because once it's part of the kernel, once it's part of that distro, yeah, like you can get those incremental upgrades. You can go outside and get like a a newer version of Mesa if you need it or something Mm -hmm. like that. But by and large, like once it's supported, it's supported and you don't have to be chasing that yeah. next release or making these big system wide potentially breaking changes uh to to take advantage of whatever it is and this is that rat race that i think a lot of nvidia people are experiencing all this time right right so they'll get that new kernel update and that breaks the nvidia driver or do you get the new nvidia driver and that that is incompatible with the kernel in some way or something like that and so you end up in this oh, oh got a black screen what do i do kind of situation yeah yeah, yeah. 
Well, and and remember, like you know, interim releases come out every six months. So I mean, you're not you're not going to be really far behind, really. It's just not you're not going to be years behind. You're going to be a few months behind. Yeah, yeah. And so, ah, oh, man. Um, every time a new Ubuntu release comes out, I get really really excited about it. Yeah, same. And <laughs> and I mean, there's there's always one or two things that's like, eh, not yet, not mm-hmm. yet. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but not too bad though. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Then I go back to to Linux Mint, and uh, and more recently I go to Aurora um, to to kind of just to get my oh it feels nice and comfy here fixed. But man, something about the Ubuntu's man keeps drawing me back, keeps drawing me back, and it could probably be because version six oh six is where I really started my true Linux journey for real. Uh, outside of just you know kind of hitting it, bouncing off it, hitting it, bouncing off it. So, yeah, you bring up some of those historical things. And yeah. interestingly in there, though, there's there's a little Easter egg that you could find in, like, the main Ubuntu. Uh. And this is really cool to me. So there's a there's a flashback, basically, to Warty, which is the mm-hmm. first release. And so That's like, 4.10. 4. So 4. it came 10. out in October of 2004. Where were you in October of 2004? Think about wow. that. That was the first official... Ubuntu release. So, yeah, I mean, I guess our first child was born by then, so I'm sure we were right in the throes, you know, of a year old, you know, child, so I don't even remember. I yeah, mean, I was going to we say, were, you we, were busy. I was <laughs> you had lack things of sleep and busy. Yeah, all of those <laughs> yeah. things. That's where I was. Uh, yeah. But the cool thing is, yeah, so, like, there's a wallpaper that is, like, the warty theme wallpaper from back 410. That, mm-hmm. That's a little Easter egg. You you got to go hunt for it, but it's yep. cool. It's there. Yeah. In 2004, I was getting started uh, at a new college and getting a job at a Circuit City selling mm-hmm. NVIDIA graphics cards. Nice. Man. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember. Uh, 60, 6,600 GTs and stuff. I think yeah, that was yeah, about the yeah, right yeah. time. That might be about the right time. Probably, but it, Yeah. But anyway, but right around that time, this is again when I was bouncing off of Linux and I ab- absolutely Ooh. did install 4.10 on a machine. And nice. It was brown. My it was very God. Brown. It was brown. But this is what they brought back. They did. Yep. Oh. So it's cool. I think it's a cool little Easter egg. I like it. It's this. This does not need to be an Easter egg. This needs to be the default. Ubuntu, I well, love purple. Okay. <laughs> I love yeah. purple. I mean, oh, it looks nice. It really does. But yeah, th- we need to go back to the brown. Okay, it needs to be well, more boring. You can totally change it real quick. It's Bring no biggie. me the brown. Okay, all right. That's that's the first thing I'm going to do. So we've got our snap episode coming up. If if that doesn't, uh, hopefully that plays out the way we want it to because of archive and all that. But uh, I mean, if nothing else, there will definitely be some talk about 2410, how it's gone. And all that kind mm-hmm. of fun stuff. And I, I promise you, the moment it goes onto the hard drive, immediately, immediately switching the theme to the Warty Warthog theme. There, and there's no going back. There's no going back. That's the no, right yeah, theme. Why would you? It's the only theme. <laughs> and so, just to cap this off a little bit, not to, you know, give any shade towards Fedora, um, I want to give them a little love, too. Um, I've said Aurora about 12 times. You, you Fedora's did. fine. did. <laughs> you you did, but I mean the cool thing is they've got a release coming up too. Uh, yep. Forty one is going to release, and that's that's getting close as well. So stay tuned, watch for that as well. I mean, there's some great stuff that's happening over there. As I follow along and kind of love the things yeah, they, I see. So and they're 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 this month too, right? Yeah, like real soon. Yeah. Oh man, see this this is the hardest part about Ubuntu and Fedora Which releasing at the pick? same time. I know, like I'm on Ubuntu, but do I switch over to Fedora? Mm-hmm. It's always so hard to to figure out. But with with my Aurora box, I don't have to I don't have to do that. I just update no, it's... my Fedora box. Track along. Yep, there it is. I just need Ubuntu everywhere else apparently. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Spread the love. Everything. Everything that you hear, all the links, all the the whatever, the videos, the things, whatever, you need to find that. And to find that, you go to linuxuserspace.show, or if you're just allergic to typing, lus.sh will get you there as well. And you can find everything, right? Anything that we've talked about, there's a link for it. 
it's in there. You can click on it. I mean, there's a link to the video if you if you don't know if if for some reason you don't know how to go to YouTube and find our channel. Yeah, there's there's hey, a link. Listen, just go high score. Click all the links. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Screenshot it, please. Uh, and then I'll give you the biggest thumbs up I can muster. Yeah. But if you want to write into the show, you can do that at contact at linuxuserspace.show. Give us all your ideas. Ian, I have your email. We're going to get back but to I, you. I, yeah, right. There, I, I have questions. I have questions. And I need to do some digging on that. So we'll get back to you uh, on that one. But if you... Have any messages for the show, write in contact at linuxuserspace.show, or you can go to linuxuserspace.show and there's a contact button. And this way, I don't even think you need an email address. You could probably fake it. Yeah. You just if fill it in, send us a message, click or fill out the, the little box and click send, and it'll end up in hey, our it's one email. Moz mail things. Right. If you don't want us to know what it is. You just totally use that. can. Yeah. And it comes into Dan's Android Thunderbird client directly. Cool. Mm -hmm. And we get back to you that way. So anyway, contact at Uh Send us an email. And those emails pretty much always, always end up in these topic shows for us to talk about. Anyway, that brings us to the next time. And next time... We're going to have the history of the snap packaging, you know, stuff. And Unless the Internet Archive got Thanos snapped out of existence. Oh, you thought. And then we're going to the li we're going to go to the library itself and pull out books. And no, we won't. We can't do you that. You know, Sorry. Uh, what was I talking about that uh, I was saying that I'm, I'm actually going to have to do that? Somebody asked for a history of something. Oh, and I was like. That's not one like the internet didn't exist it's, at that it's time. It's not so digital. Uh -huh. No, so it would it would have to be one of those. I I think it might have been like a history of Unix or something. And I'm like, dude, yeah. I would have to go to the physical library, which I do love to do. By the way, they have and, a seed library. They just give you seeds. Like, nice. I love the library. God, that's, I love the library. Yeah, there's a lot of things at the library. Yeah. So, so I'd have to go and get like the history of Unix at Berkeley or something, and it would just it would have to. It would need to be a tome for me to actually... Anyway, sorry, that was a segue. But anyway, so Thanos Snap, the Internet Archive, they may not be back in time. So, so if they're not so back let's, in time... So let's, let's hope it is. We really do, because we want to hear about that. And so I do. if not, we'll have an alternative plan. Don't don't fret. We'll get something That's out. That's right. That's um, right. So yeah, whatever we can cram into the show, we'll have it in there. In between shows, you can catch us, you know, Twitter, Mastodon, all the things that we linked up there above, you know, Telegram, Blue Sky, yeah, whatever. Yeah, look, look, look above me if you're on the video. Look, it's like right, I think, uh, there's, a, there's a string of logos, just, yeah, it's logos. Yeah. yeah. That's them. But do give us some feedback and some suggestions and, you know, have a conversation with us and we'll see what we can do to get those things incorporated into the show. So, Leo, that brings us down to the end here. Where can we find you? You can find me on the internet at Leo Chavez at Mastodon.social. You can also find me over on the Blue Skies. All right, sounds good. I am at KC2BZ at Mastodon.social and uh, Monetary Abyss at the Blue Sky Place. And you can find the show at Linux User Space at mastodon.social but also at linux user space on pretty all much everything places. everywhere yeah. all the time uh so yeah if you're looking for us on do, do they have a i don't know type in linux user space all one word and i bet you i bet Probably. you will pop we, up we, we, we might be on every single social ever. we're sleeping we're sleeping on all them socials mm -hmm. so come back in two weeks and we'll have more linux user space that's right bye y'all see you then have to ask did did they not have casey 2 be easy or are you getting away probably, from the old yeah, ham radio well, handle i use both kind of well you because oh, on reddit right like if you yeah. want to find dan on reddit it's monetary abyss if you want to find him it on is. lemmy it's also monetary abyss so 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess so. I mean, it's 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 one I've used a long time. It's a, it's a gamer tag, actually. It's my okay. Xbox oh, gamer right. tag. Oh, right. Well, that actually because, that tracks because that's where it started. Because getting guess fragged what? by Monetary Abyss feels bad. So I get uh, it. I totally there's get that, it. But like, I, <laughs> when I bought the device, right? I was like, oh, this thing is such a money pit. Games are a money pit, right. and they are. So that's where the name came from. That's what that okay. means. A okay. money pit. And so that's right. that's it. I love it. It's a great name. 